intense scenes and video coming in from Hurricane Ian as it brought major storm surge and freshwater flooding to portions of southwestern Florida. Naples, Fort Myers especially were hit hard by that storm surge yesterday. You can see here the water rescue that was being conducted by the Naples Fire Rescue uh, Department there. Boats went out to have to rescue people from the roofs of their homes. And of course, there that uh, person getting rescued from their vehicle from the fire department. So thankful for our first responders who are out there helping folks who have been trapped and have been put in bad situations across portions of Florida from Ian. Uh, speaking of bad situations, we have a flash flood emergency for the little Wakiva River uh, for these areas north of Orlando through Altamont Springs, Wakiva Springs as well. If you live in this area, this is around the northern end of the I-4 corridor and you're near the Wakiva River, you need to be seeking higher ground immediately. This is a life threatening situation. Catastrophic flash flooding is possible as that river is now moving into major flood stage. So once again, if you're in these areas around Wakiva Springs, Altamont Springs, parts of Seminole County for the little Wakiva River, if you're anywhere near that area, you need to be seeking higher ground as soon as possible and make sure you're uh, not driving through flood waters, and if you do have water coming into your home and you need a rescue, uh, call 911. Uh, very heavy rainfall totals coming in over the last about 24 hours. Northport picking up 16 inches of rainfall. You can see these areas from Port Charlotte to just west of Sebring, where we've had over a foot of rain, potentially upwards of 15 inches in some locations, with multiple flash flood warnings still in effect around portions of Orlando, Port St. Lucie up to Charleston as well, still under those flood watches. We still have a high risk for flash flooding today through portions of Florida, though the area has gone down quite a bit. Uh, still just south of Jacksonville through areas like St. Augustine, north of Daytona Beach, under that high risk and the moderate risk for flash flooding. So if you're in these areas along the northern Florida coast, make sure you're staying extra weather aware today. And if you live near a river or a low lying area or a creek or a stream, stay very weather aware and know where to seek higher ground in case a flash flood warning is issued. Our level three threat for flooding continues tomorrow from Charleston right up the I-26 corridor to Asheville. Does include Charlotte, Columbia, Greenville as well, and Myrtle Beach just to the west of Wilmington. So the level three out of four flood threat tomorrow is also going to be fairly significant for these areas across portions of the Carolinas. Additional rainfall totals could still be topping around six to 10 inches in some locations as we continue to see that heavy rain get wrapped in around Ian. And then our flood threat again begins to shift towards the Carolinas as we get through your Friday and Saturday with pockets of six plus inches of rain possible, especially up and down portions of that I-26 corridor. Our forecast model likes that chance for pockets of 79 inches of rain with possibly some totals that could be topping nine plus inches for areas across the Carolinas. Folks, this is why we talk about this so frequently. Flooding and surge, the number one and two cause of deaths in tropical systems. It's not the wind. It's not even the tornadoes. It is the surge and flooding, so make sure you're taking these threats very seriously. Uh, we still do have the storm surge coming in here across portions of northern Florida and into the Carolinas and parts of Georgia. So far, upwards of a foot or two, so the storm surge hasn't been super significant yet, but it will likely continue to rise. Fort Myers saw a storm surge yesterday of over seven feet. Parts of South Florida as well, picking up that storm surge of two to even six feet in Naples. But the post storm analysis will give us a better idea of just how high that water eventually got, which will likely be higher than some of those storm surge gauges showed us. Uh, storm surge warnings remain in effect from Cross City, just south of around Cedar Key, all the way down through Monroe County, and then Jacksonville up through Charleston under those uh, storm surge warnings as well, and a storm surge watch issued for around the Myrtle Beach area. I oh, do want to talk about the wind and the severe weather threat from this system as well. So let's take you out to views from Tampa, Florida. The traffic light, oh no, there it goes. A flashing yellow, no longer flashing, but hey, we're going to be, uh, yeah, RIP to that traffic signal. Uh, Florida officers out there uh, getting that cleared off the roadway. The winds are still going to be strong with the system throughout the day today, even though Ian has weakened to a tropical storm. The winds it brought in was were very impressive yesterday, had some gusts measured to 140 miles per hour, sustained winds at the time of landfall, uh, estimated around 150 miles per hour, uh, which does make it the tied for the fourth ranked hurricane uh, in terms of strength on record uh, to make landfall in the state of Florida tied with Charlie back in 2004, which made landfall at almost the exact same spot. So unfortunately, Southwest Florida 18 years later uh, getting smacked by a very similar system, but a much larger system with a much bigger Iowa and a much larger swath of hurricane force winds. Speaking of that 140 mile an hour gust, Cape Coral measured that gust to 140 Punta Gorda as well. 135 mile an hour wind gusts. Grove 
Grove City, Captiva, Naples, Pelican Bay all getting gusts over Category 3 hurricane strength. We're still seeing some pretty gusty winds this morning across the region. Gusts topping 66 miles an hour relatively recently up towards Daytona Beach. The center of the storm gradually shifting offshore today as it has weakened to a tropical storm, but we'll have the potential to restrengthen a little bit before it moves back on shore near Charleston. Winds are going to be close to hurricane strength from that latest forecast from the National Hurricane Center, close to around 70 miles an hour as this approaches parts of the South Carolina coast late in the afternoon on Friday. There's a closer look at that cone Friday evening. That sustained wind speed estimated up towards 70 miles an hour, but there's some very warm water out there. There's the Gulf Stream waters. This could potentially strengthen quickly. There's going to be some wind shear that prevents it from doing so, but we'll have that potential possibly for Ian to get close back to uh, hurricane strength once again as this approaches land. You can see that little bump up in intensity on our forecast graphic before the intensity drops off as this moves inland. I still expecting some strong gusts across the state of Florida today. Additional power outages will still be possible, so stay away from trees, stay inside, away from windows and doors as those strongest winds impact your area. A Daytona Beach, Jacksonville, Savannah by Friday morning, seeing some of those stronger winds. And then as we get through Friday afternoon, that's when South Carolina gets potentially the third U.S. landfall from this system and the fourth overall after this made landfall in Cuba earlier this week as well. Still going to have the potential for some isolated tornadoes, possibly some damaging wind gusts from any thunderstorms that can get going today as well. Jacksonville down to Titusville, right outside of Cape Canaveral, under that threat for an isolated tornado today. That tornado threat moves up to the Carolinas tomorrow from Charleston through Myrtle Beach, Elizabeth City, even to Norfolk. So parts of Southern Virginia around the Chesapeake could see that tornado threat as well. We're going to continue our full coverage throughout the day today with team coverage checking in on the after uh, the after the impacts of Ian. Nasty view of that landfall yesterday.